So this rant is going to be kind of informal and personal. Because it has been brought to my attention that somebody who claims to have supported me uh, in the past and who currently claims that I'm his friend had the nerve to uh, talk shit about me behind my back. And I kind of thought that the subject involved <clears throat> would make mighty fine vlog material, if I do say so myself. And um, so I thought I'd get started on that. Let me pop open my ice brick over here. Now, given the title of the fucking video, you must be asking yourself, especially if you're new here, well, I thought bums were alcoholics or druggies. Why is this guy drinking water? Well, I am uh, clean and sober, wouldn't you know? And I make good life choices. Uh, I try to be ethical. I try to be reasonable. Um... And one of the things that caused that was growing up in such a terrible place. Um, because, basically, I was drinking and doing drugs and shit before coming back here. And uh, the drugs weren't like anything like, you know, meth or coke or whatever. But... Uh, you know, weed, spice, fucking salvia, that sort of drug. Um, and I was doing that and getting blackout drunk, uh, if not just normal drunk, um, because it made it easier to deal with the fact that I lived in a place I hated, that I resented growing up in, that I resented being a part of that I had no school spirit for, that I had no town spirit for. And uh, it made it easier, you know? So, <laughs> I wasn't alcoholic, even though that sounds like I might have been. But I was never alcoholic, because my father was. Possibly similar reasons. Um, lifetime of either bullying or abuse from people you're supposed to be able to trust. Shit like that, you know? Learning from a very young age to get, take getting stabbed in the back and keeping moving. And so that's one of the reasons that I'm very good at keeping moving. And why things like this are bumps in the road and won't stop me. But I figure they're like, sort of valuable lessons in that sort of thing. Because you see, like, the fact that I wasn't an alcoholic doesn't mean I wasn't maladjusted. I've been below poverty my whole life. But to call me a bum when I haven't been on government assistance for many years, when I haven't uh, been sleeping in the streets, I mean, my my closest brush with like the raw reality of homelessness for a bit there was like living in my car back before I fucked it up by spending more money on possibly my real uh, problem addiction which was energy drinks at the time than oil changes and shit so my car fucked up on a hill and, yeah, there were periods of my life where I fucked up enough that I was basically at the bottom. And a lot of those points, I felt like there was nothing keeping me here. And I regularly considered not being here anymore. And, um... Let me be real clear here. That's not the answer. 
what the answer is is finding the kind of people who made you that way and never fucking letting them win. And so the bullies, the two-faced people, those kinds of people, in addition to the people who will hate me just because somebody else said so, the sort of dog-piling mobs, Remember the uh, red-headed libertarian situation where she just lied, her followers believed it, and then I fucking got repeatedly threatened, repeatedly reported, and then when I tried to make videos about it, she tried to get them removed from YouTube. Unsuccessfully, I might add. Because... She and somebody else didn't like the fact that I was speaking out against their little chick click. Their stupid little click on Twitter. And it's not just chick clicks either, right? Hey, there's a lot of them. Chick clicks, dude clicks, mixed clicks. Clicks that don't like me. Because I had the sheer audacity to go against what they believe to be dogma or sacrosanct or because the kind of meanness they will take from their friends. They will not take from their friends. Because it's sort of like Hillary Clinton lying and claiming that it's like, oh yeah, you know what? I just got a public and private position. Right? Sort of like I just had a private booger and I just made it public. But it's still a booger. Which means that maybe your stances don't fucking change. Maybe the ones that you hold in private are the closest to real. And maybe the opinions that you talk shit about people with in your stupid GMs. Yeah. Maybe those are the ones you really hold. And that's why a lot of these places are sort of the domain of the craven. That's why, you know, I have verifiably had people come from group messages just to insult me and then go back into the ether just to try to control me and then escape back into the fog but it didn't stop me clearly <laughs> it didn't change me didn't make me go away because I'm not these people's bitch and they really just want people to be their bitch but I'm nobody's bitch and I will say things to people when I goddamn want. That sort of made a certain group of people very recently that I feel like I can use as an object lesson uh, a little bit irritated. Because when one of the people there, I forget exactly what they said, whether or not they were already a Fed or whether or not they were in training to become a Fed, but it was something like that. The person who invited me to this group is allegedly an anarchist. And allegedly big on the whole anarchy train. But they created a group full of statists. That was what they did. And they added me. And not only that, but they added a bunch of statists who are fucking right wing exclusively. Which is why they admitted, while they were talking shit about me, that uh, they don't have very many progressives. As though progressivism is the only alternative to their stupid right-wing circle jerk. Which they removed me from twice. They removed me from it once uh, because they decided that um, my my 
takes were too anarchist. And <laughs> I, I got added back because I added enough people, right? And then when I got kicked out the second time, all those people got kicked out as well. But I got kicked out the second time because I removed the people who were kicking me. And, and the people who were kicking me, right, at that particular point, the, the chief person kicking me went by the Jack Hastronaut. And by now, because of some of the people that I added's words and mine, that person who I think was the one who either wanted to be or was a fed has deleted their account. So maybe the problem is adding the fed to ancap, an com, an anything circles. And maybe the problem isn't the guy being rude. But wouldn't you know, these fucking people can't not be rude even when they allegedly win. So they kick out the people that they think were on my side, right? They think they've cleaned the place out of anyone who could possibly dissent against the decision to get rid of the evil anarchist. And this was after the FBI agent called me a bum. Or, I actually forget exactly what it was, but he wanted to be a fed of some sort, right? Or he already was one. After this person called me a bum, and after I was called a bum for making videos like this. Yeah, guys, I'm a bum. Ignore the fact that I live in a house in which I pay rent. Ignore the fact that I haven't been on government assistance for years. Ignore all facts, basically. Call me a bum because you don't like my hair. Call me a bum because you don't like my ideas. I'm a bum because a lot of people are elitist scumbags. And a lot of people think bum is an insult, think it's an insult to be divorced enough from the system that you are on the streets or that you don't live in a house or etc. etc. blah. These people are very, very toxic to any political movement aimed at liberation. And that's why they usually don't really rely on a whole lot of liberation. They would rather just force people to do what they want. Plain and simple. They're statist hacks. And fucking jackboots. Either in training or in practice. And having people like that in your liberty circles is a good way to get your liberty circles compromised. At least philosophically. If you want to sell out, go for it, right? You can have whoever you want in your circles, but vet them better if you don't. So, just to prove that I'm not full of shit, right? I have a thread that I made on my alt Twitter account. Um, and this thread is right here. Always great to find out that an anarchist asking you to be on a podcast, they say they're starting. That happened too. Is talking shit behind your back to statists who called you a bum while knowing exactly zero about you. So, Mike, why don't you tell me how you really feel to my face? Craven. I'm an asshole, to be honest. He's hoping there will be less drama now. I was the Sonic guy, but he was trying to be nice. Like a literal homeless person 
isn't the one anyone is going to listen to when it comes to life philosophy and not being ruled by anyone. I'm literally homeless, guys. I don't have a home. I'm not sitting in my room that I pay rent for, surrounded by things that I got without any government assistance. I'm homeless, guys. Fuck you, Randy McRandy. And I would use your real name if you weren't hiding. Michael says, Yeah, Jer was the sonic guy. I agree with Jer philosophically, but there's no denying how much of a dick he can be laughing my fucking ass off. A dick like talking shit about me behind my back? Mike? Hmm? A dick like agreeing with somebody who's accusing me of being a literal homeless person? Hmm? A dick like completely discarding my entire philosophy because you said, yeah, or boiling me down to the sonic guy. It's like, it's like, you know, you talk to Bill Nye, the science guy, or if you believe in the Highlander theory of there can be only one Anthony Fauci, the science guy video coming tomorrow, um, you know, I guess I'm just Jeremiah, the sonic guy. Right? I can deal with that because Sonic is a freedom fighter and he is, an par he, he is a part of an underground resistance on a regular basis. He is a role model for all free-minded thinkers. He's just not a role model for pieces of shit. So I guess you're out of luck. The way he threw insults after being called a bum... The way he insulted people after being insulted by them. Oh no. It's like dropping a nuke on someone for punching you in the face. It's dumb. Nah. The nuke is the person who removed me from the fucking group message. That's you. You're the nuke because you removed me from the group message and you wouldn't let me reply. And when you remove somebody from a group message, they can't see what's been posted. So you not only removed me from the group message and all the people you thought, all the people I added, but <laughs> you removed me from the group and all the evidence that I was in the clear. Because that's the bitch move that somebody like this makes. <laughs> A, who quotes the I was trying to be nice person. If anything, dare I say this, that behavior panders to the worst stereotype linked to anarchist type. The cast cha uh, Jack Astronaut remark is pretty mild, and talking about your ambitions is nice, but you gotta do them. I talked about my ambitions because people were insulting me for having no ambitions and not trying to do anything better with my life. I was directly responding, you cunt. <laughs> and uh, I've made a job out of being an angry, unpleasant conspiracy theorist, voted the most aggressively negative person on Liberty Twitter. You're not allowed to jokingly refer to yourself in the same way that other people have labeled you. You're not allowed anymore, right? And then Grizz, who would regularly talk political views, says, let's not talk political views. It's strictly gaming. Politics are cancer and toxic as shit. That whole group is cancer and toxic as shit. And this person says, especially when he bluntly said this. And Mike says, yeah, he's bluntly kind of a piece of shit. It's his brand. Nah. Not whatsoever. The piece of shit is the person talking shit behind, behind my back. That's you. That's all of you who are doing this behind my back. 
And then I went on to say, you're going to have to convince me to go on your podcast now since you added me to a group with a bunch of statists and then expected it to not get a little heated when they started insulting me, and anarchists in general. Or did you think this would fly and nobody would see it? So he, he, he sent me a request on Tuesday saying, my friend and I plan on hosting a podcast a few days a week after he gets his degree or is able to find time off from school. It's going to be libertarian and current evebst themed, but I'd like to have some guests and I don't care how you describe yourselves ideologically. You don't care? You don't say. So I just said, sure. Hey, right? You shouldn't just talk about your ambitions, Mike. Don't say a word about your podcast until you started it, Mike. I thought you were agreeing with them, Mike. And then... <clears throat> A bunch of shit about echo chambers. Oh man, look at this. He admits there's not a lot of progressive voices in here, and that the only reason it exists is for game lovers and nerds. Politics is fine on occasion, but it isn't the focus of the group. Just not on the occasion that somebody stirs the pot or rocks the boat. Then, politics are bad. The algorithm is genuinely dangerous sometimes, Randy says. It leads people down weird rabbit holes where they end up in echo chambers, and what they see in their echo chambers makes them feel scared, angry, and want to lash out at a bogeyman. A bogeyman like me? The bogeyman you removed? In order to create your echo chamber with a lack of progressives? And where anarchists aren't allowed to speak and thrive? or at least respond and do character with how they are treated? Fuck you. <laughs> and <clears throat> I was accused of spazzing out at bum. It's not spazzing to say what you do for a living when people accuse you of being a bum. That's just being reasonable and not just insulting them back. Also, saying what you do, proving them wrong. And I said, if you don't like echo chambers, it's probably not a good idea to kick out people with significantly different perspectives and not invite people who you disagree with. The truth is, you don't mind echo chambers. You just want yourself to echo the loudest. Fix that, Mike. <clears throat> then, Mike says, I call myself a freelancer, but the issue is... I barely have enough clients to make ends meet. One of the first things you'll see in the description is an offer from Freelancer to get $40 off your first uh, transaction on Freelancer. And you can use that in order to hire me for very little money for your first project on Freelancer. And then I can add more to my portfolio. You know how many people have done that? Two. So... Yeah, maybe my client base is kind of narrow, because I've repeatedly extended this offer, and bupkis. I have spent so many solid days of just trying to get people as clients, and bupkis. You know, one of the reasons I like Better Call Saul is when he magically waves his fingers at his phone and hopes that there's a message there. I feel that. Because I got the talent. Look at my delirious thumbnails on YouTube. That could be yours. For the low, low price of... So, yeah, I have fucking talent. And I'm constantly learning new things to do with it on a daily basis. I'm constantly learning new software, new plugins, new everything. And I get new skills on a regular fucking basis. New knowledge on a regular fucking basis constantly absorbing research papers that other people won't even fucking read before they opine on on a regular fucking basis. I am an information and talent machine, motherfucker. You are two-thirds my age. Act like it.
pretty sure he's earning below minimum wage, spends what little he receives on his cheap phone rent and simple food. That's a good thing. I should waste my money and become a junkie or dependent on the consumerist cycle. That would make me more like the people you call friends. And I should betray my principles because I specifically don't believe in being like that. You know, I should just walk away from everything and not take the little support that I do get, which I am deeply grateful for, that has kept this boat afloat as the serious thing that it is. And by little, I mean on a regular basis. It's been fucking huge over the years. And I thank everyone so deeply for that. I just... I need more. And I need to do more work to both feel like I earned it and to, you know, get more eyes on my shit. But I have a plan. And despite what your fucking knuckle-dragging GM seems to think, expressing your plans isn't a bad fucking thing. I got my first job since I was 17. I was more focused on school at the time. Got my first part-time job the summer before my senior year. Awesome. Were either of those jobs making anarchist content? Didn't think so. So that's the kind of person he is. And this was what the, the fucking person responds with, right? You've got to keep your brain sharp, so what you're doing should be normal, but it isn't. Getting a job, while I understand valid disagreements for working for a boss, also keeps your mind sharp. And nothing can, other than that, right? A eh, who? Nothing other than that, because otherwise this is a false fucking dichotomy, and your mind ain't that fucking sharp. There is nothing wrong with asking for help in and of itself. It's when you do that constantly at the expense of your own self-development is when things turn to shit. The is was unnecessary. See me after class. And just to be super clear... You don't know my self-development. You don't watch my shit. You don't support me. You don't know me. Shut the fuck up about me. And I said, basically, none of you know me, and you didn't know what I do. And apparently, either you don't know me either, Mike, or you're lying. But feel free to lie about me behind my back. I'm involved in self-development every day. You just don't like me. And that's irrelevant. And so are you. And hey, Mike. If talking about what you do or are planning on doing is somehow bum activity, then maybe you can explain to me why it's not for you to talk about how you and yours are allegedly starting podcasts. Maybe this is why you couldn't say it to my face. I'm too fast. Catch up. And he replied, because he wasn't dug in enough yet. So he said, <laughs> Dude, I'm sorry, but not everyone in that GC agreed that you were... Or, sorry, but everyone in that GC... So, first off, not everyone. You had to kick people out who didn't. And clearly somebody in there is still batting for me. Because I caught you in 4K. So, everyone in that GC agreed that you were stirring up drama and not sticking to the topic. Yet I was responding to people who were not sticking to the fucking topic. Sorry it pisses you off that I have other friends. You don't have any friends. Let me be super clear here. 
Hmm. It's funny how you can have somebody's back and then they're totally okay with calling you all manner of things behind yours. Don't apologize if you're not sorry, Mike. If I'm such a terrible person, why do you stick around in the GMs I started? This is hack behavior. Sorry. Can I get some water here? Shouldn't this be a flask of whiskey or something? I'm such a bum. Not like I eat healthily, live healthily, have good ideas that I express well. Nah. Has to be that. So, just to be super clear, this is evil shit. And it's what pervades the Liberty community. And it needs to be talked about and routed out. Because this isn't going to do jack fucking shit for actually stopping any sort of tyranny. You know what will? Not encouraging people who treat it as their own personal numbers game and nothing more or sellouts, or anything like that. Mike is a sellout who treats it like a numbers game. And you have no friends, Mike, because you don't know what friendship means. Friendship involves more than being connected on social fucking media. And maybe I have to explain that to your Gen Z ass. But let me be super clear here. Friends don't talk mindless shit behind friends' backs or agree with other people that they're a bum with a dull mind who's constantly asking for handouts for nothing, who doesn't do anything, and shouldn't talk about aspirations even when prompted and directly interfaced with about those aspirations. Liars. Those need to be removed. Or they need to stop fucking lying. That's you, Mike. You don't you don't know what friends are. Other friends as though we're still friends? Go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself and your stupid bullshit sorry. Because let me be super clear, you're not sorry, and you shouldn't lie about being sorry, or lie about all the other things you've lied about. And anyone else like this, who wants to say somebody like me, who really works fucking hard, is a bum? Why don't you pay me to listen to your bullshit? Because I'm too busy smashing the fucking state.